Hey, this is Meredith from vidpromom.com and a couple of months ago I published a few tutorials on how to use Adobe Premiere Elements 2018 and I promised that I'd be back with a color correction tutorial with Premiere Elements. So here I am. This is it. I'm partnering with Adobe on this Premiere Elements 2018 tutorial on how to color correct your footage when you're editing your clips together into a fun to watch video with Premiere Elements 2018. Now this applies to clips from your phone or your GoPro or really any digital video clips that you might have. In fact, if you're creating family videos, hobby videos, or even YouTube videos, that's kind of my jam here on the VidProMom YouTube channel. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and join the VidProMom family while you're here. Now, if you haven't checked out Premiere Elements yet, you can grab a 30-day free trial to the newest version, that's Adobe Premiere Elements 2018. I put a link down in the description below. I also wanna let you know that I have a Premiere Elements cheat sheet for you. It's a printable one-page cheat sheet. It's completely free. You can download it, you can save it to your phone for future reference, or save it to your tablet, print it out, save it for later. There's a link in the description to that below as well. So let's dive into the mysterious world of color correction. The first thing that I wanna point out though is that your video clips may not need to be color corrected at all. We're talking about family videos, hobby videos, fun videos, not feature films. So I tend not to be a perfectionist about this kind of thing, but sometimes your video clips might just look kind of off. Maybe they're a little bit too dark or if you shot indoors, depending on the setting, on your camera. Maybe they're kind of a little bit yellowish from the indoor light. Or if you use a GoPro and you have flat color, those colors don't really pop. They just kind of look a little bit dull. So if you feel like your footage has any of those kinds of issues, then hop onto the computer with me. We're going to head into Adobe Premiere Elements 2018. See what we can do to fix some of those things. Okay, so I have Adobe Premiere Elements 2018 opened here on my Mac. It should look pretty much the same for you if you're on a PC. I have a few clips already on my timeline. I just kind of grabbed some different clips from random trips and things that I've done. And then I have a one clip from um, a viewer who actually needed some color correction help. So we're going to kind of address a bunch of different issues here with colors and just see how we can make them look as natural as possible. That's kind of the name of the game here. We just want our footage to look natural and look its best. So there are a couple of different tools here in Premiere Elements that you can use. I want to show you where to find the color correction tools. So on the right hand side, on the top right, you have this uh, menu called fix and you have these little slider bars here. So if you click that, it's going to open another menu. You have something called auto smart tone. And if you hit that, let's see, let's turn that little thing down. If I hit apply, then this is going to auto analyze my footage and it's going to correct the tones in different places in the footage and it's going to really do a lot of the work for you and then you can go in and fine-tune it later if you want to and so you can see it changed things changed a few a few different things here but what I want to do is hit reset and you can use that if you want to to just kind of correct things automatically but remember like I said not every single clip needs to be color corrected so let me show you a few other things here you do have this tool called color if you hit these little squares it's going to kind of do some funky things here with your footage. If you want to have fun with it, you can do that. I'm going to hit reset. The other thing you could do is select auto color and it does it looks a lot like what it looked like when you did auto smart tone. Down here, there's a little more button. If you hit that, then you have some sliders. And if you're familiar with um, adjusting things inside of um, Adobe Photoshop or Lightroom. You might be familiar with the sliders here. Um, so these are there for you. You can just hit the more or less button to show them or hide them. You also have this lighting um, option here. And if you hit more, down here is where you can find your exposure. And I usually find that if I'm having a problem with the colors or something in my clip, um, or if they're too dark or too light, exposure is usually the first place that I go to try to correct it. So you can use the slider. Um, so if you have a clip that's real dark, you can bring up the exposure or if you have a, um, a clip that's real washed out, you can bring it down. So for example, in this clip here, 
um, the sun glare is really hitting the lens, which is causing things to look a little bit washed out. So it's not because it's overexposed necessarily. It's just a little bit of a sun glare. So if I wanted to, I could bring the exposure down a little bit. I could play with that and see if that was going to do anything for me. I'm going to hit reset. Because one of the great things you can still do here is just hit auto levels and you can see if that looks any better, which I think it does. It makes the black look black. It makes whites look white. And then it kind of gets rid of some of that haziness. You can also hit auto contrast, which does a similar sort of thing. If I hit reset and do auto contrast, similar thing, right? So um, you don't have to do everything on your own, but if you choose to do, to go like the auto route, you can always, you can always undo. You can always adjust it more or less on your own. We have the auto smart tone. We have a color. We have this color RGB, which does some fancy funky things. And if you wanted to adjust just the red, green, or blue colors in your video, you could use that. I'm going to hit reset. So a lot of the things that are available here will make your clips look kind of funky. And if you want to go for that look, you can, you can totally do that. But for the most part, I like my videos to just look as natural as possible. And then down here you have temperature and tint. Um, so this is just like it sounds, kind of changes the temperature of your video a little bit. If I slide it up, it looks a little bit more warm. If I slide it down, it looks a little bit more cool. So if you have some indoor footage that looks a little bit yellow from the indoor lighting, you could bring that temperature down a little bit and tone, the, tone that yellowness down a bit. Um, one more thing I want to show you and then we'll kind of color correct these other clips here um, is if we come under effects and then in this menu here, you have some options. If you choose color correction, you have a few other little tools here. So this HSL tuner, this is your hue, saturation, and luminance sliders. So in this case, you could actually adjust the hue, saturation, and luminance of specific colors in your video, right? Compared to over here where you have, um, where is it under color? You have hue lightness and saturation. Um, this would be like saturation would be the saturation of the whole entire video, every single color in there versus um, the HSL tuner lets you adjust those things on an individual color basis. Okay, so those are your color correction tools inside of Premiere Elements. I want to go through some of these clips and kind of adjust some of the colors and we'll just kind of work through this and see see what we can do. So this clip was sent to me by a viewer named Brian and this is from Sedona, Arizona. He says the rocks and, and things over here, they look a little bit brown in the footage, but in real life, they're actually a little more kind of a red color. So we'll see if we can fix that up a little bit. I noticed that obviously we have some green down here and then we have the blue sky and we want that sky to stay blue. So I'm going to come down here. Let's actually try this HSL tuner because I mean, it looks fairly like the exposure looks fine. And um, so what I want to try to do is actually come to the saturation. So I just want to kind of punch up Let's like punch up the red and the orange and we can see things are changing a little bit here and the yellow. What can we do with the yellow? Oh, the yellow is really affecting our green quite a bit. We can actually make that, those greens kind of pop, pop a little. Um, let's see if there's any magenta that we can bring out. Not really. Okay. So um, we'll leave the magenta right there. So the red and the orange, we can pump those up a little bit to kind of bring out the redness of those rocks. Now, I've never been to Arizona, so I have no idea really what color they're supposed to be, okay? But Brian says that they just look a little more brown in this clip rather than the natural kind of reddish color. So that's one thing you could do there. Um, let's play with the hue a little bit. So if I bring this red slider down, it kind of brings out some more reddish nature here. 
but we want to be careful that we're not making other colors look unnatural. So you could come through here and adjust things that way if you wanted to. Now I'm going to come over to this clip here. So in this clip, I believe that I had I was using a GoPro and I think that I had my ProTune turned on with, with the GoPro flat color. And you can kind of see how the greens, they don't really pop. The color of the sky is just, is kind of, it's just kind of dull. This thing over here is definitely very yellow. And this grass down here is actually fake turf. So it's very, very green. Not a very natural green though, right? So if I wanted to do something here, I might consider... Um, coming under fix and then let's go under lighting and then more and then I could try to bump the saturation up a little bit you do have to be careful just bumping up the saturation like across the board because it's going to bump up everything but usually when the colors are looking kind of dull and flat usually saturation does the trick for me but we could do Oh, lots of crazy things here. I don't think we want to do that. I'm going to hit undo. So a lot of times your exposure is what you want to look at and then maybe your saturation. Now, I think the exposure is totally fine on this one. Let's move on to something else here. Okay, so we already looked at that clip actually. So let's move on to a different clip here. So this is Christmas morning. This was taken with a GoPro indoors and it was fairly dark. You can see there's some natural light outside, but it's it wasn't real light in there at the time. Um, um, that we were opening Christmas presents. So it's, this one is pretty dark. So first thing I want to do is come down to lighting and then more. And then let's try to bump up our exposure just a little bit. And when you do this, things might start to look a little bit grainy. And so you do lose a little bit of quality sometimes. But I don't know. I think that's okay right um our contrast we probably don't want our contrast to be up if anything we could lower it just a touch and our brightness let's see what happens there so we can definitely bring in some light here so um that's a that's a pretty big difference if you ask me let me turn it off so this was what it looked like before this is what it looks like now so it looks a lot more, um, it still looks natural. Nothing looks too crazy. Um, if I come up to color, we could actually maybe bump up the saturation just a little bit, perhaps, maybe not. We don't want to, want to make sure, right? So like she's wearing pink, she's wearing like a peachy color. There's colors on the tree. We want to be careful about our saturation that we don't bring it up so much that now this wall is pink because it's not pink in real life. It's actually like a blue gray color. So um, it's up to you. You can just kind of eyeball it and see um, and see how it goes for you. I think this one looks fine. It looks pretty good like that. So those are your color correction tools inside of Premiere Elements. It really depends on your own footage, um, what you're going to want to do. But like I said, you want to look at your um, exposure and make sure that it, everything is not um, too dark or too light. And then maybe look at your saturation if you feel like your colors are a little bit dull. So just eyeballing it and seeing what looks best to you is really all you need to do. And just don't forget that not everything needs to be color corrected. You just want things to kind of look as best as they possibly can and to look natural, look like they did when you were there seeing this moment with your own eyes. So don't forget if you're totally brand new to video editing with Adobe Premiere Elements 2018, I do have that cheat sheet for you. It's just a one page printable cheat sheet. You can even save it to your phone for future reference. I put a link down below for you so that you can grab that cheat sheet. If you haven't checked out the latest version of Adobe Premiere Elements, it's Premiere Elements 2018, or if you haven't upgraded from a future version, now is a really good time to do that, especially since maybe you wanna color correct some of your clips based on this tutorial. So you can hit the link in the description below to grab your 30 day free trial. Now we're not totally done with this whole color correction thing. I'm actually gonna be doing two live stream tutorials with Adobe over on the Adobe Photoshop Elements Facebook page. Those are gonna be coming up really soon. I'll put a link below as soon as I know when we're going to schedule them or you can watch the replays of course. The first one is going to be on how to color correct your underwater photos. So if you've been diving or snorkeling and you notice that your uh, your videos or your photos are a little bit dark, they're maybe a little bit greenish and they just don't have that 
punchy tropical color feel to them. We're gonna learn how to fix that inside of Adobe Premiere Elements 2018. So that live tutorial is coming up soon along with another one that I'm gonna do on this really fun feature that Premiere Elements 2018 has called the Color Pop Guided Edit. And this one does exactly what it sounds. It makes your colors pop. I'll put all of the links down below or if you follow the VidProMom Facebook page, I will let you know when I'm going live there as well. So if this color correction tutorial was helpful for you and I've shown you how to make your colors pop and come alive in your videos, then hit that like button and let me know in the comments if you have any color correction questions for me or any video editing questions with Premiere Elements at all. I'd love to hear from you down in the comments and don't forget to hit subscribe so that we can stay in touch. Bye!